is fun. This is the village where maths is done. Look for the people that you will meet every time you see them walking down the street. These are the houses and they are known, each by a number all its own. Along to the school gate and back again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Count all the places that you will see. Listen to the stories that there will be. Here in the village where we've begun to find out. Maths is fun. Maths is fun. Hello. I wonder how many people shall we meet in the village today? I can see Mrs. Wells, the crossing lady. Can you? So now there are five people in the village, and our number today will be the number five. So let's begin with a song all about five. Five fat frogs sitting on the shore. One swam to the lily pad, leaving only four. Four fat frogs, happy as can be. One said, I'll join my friend, and then there were three. Three fat frogs, thinking what to do. One said, I'm going to dive, and then there were two. Two fat frogs, having lots of fun. One slipped into the pond, and then there was one. One fat frog, feeling all alone, went to the lily pad, and then there were none. Five fat frogs, wondering where to go. Will they all swim back again? I don't know. I've never seen five fat frogs all together, have you? But I've never seen a thin frog either. And I've certainly never seen a thin garden gnome. They're always round and happy looking. Well, nearly always. Our story today is all about them, and it's called Five Garden Gnomes. Mrs. Wells, the crossing lady, was walking to the market when she met Kate and Ben. Hello, she said. Would you like to help me choose something for my garden? Oh, yes, please, said Kate. What are you going to buy? I'm going to buy some gnomes, she said. Real gnomes? asked Ben. No, laughed Mrs. Wells, plastic ones. So they went to the stall which sold all kinds of things for gardens. Spades, forks, buckets, and many other things. Then Kate and Ben saw just what Mrs. Wells was looking for. Look, cried Ben, garden gnomes all standing in a row. Kate counted them. One, two, three, four, five. I only need four, said Mrs. Wells. The man at the stall asked Mrs. Wells which four she would like. Which do you think I should buy, she asked Kate and Ben. Well, said Kate, four of them have nice bright red suits and bright blue hats. And the other one has a dark green suit and a dark green hat, said Ben. And the four with the bright suits have smiling faces, said Kate. Mrs. Wells looked at them. Four of the gnomes did have smiling faces. And the other one looks very sad, said Ben. I will buy those four gnomes with the bright clothes and the smiling faces, please, said Mrs. Wells to the man. So he put the four smiling gnomes into a box. But Kate and Ben didn't notice. They were still looking at the sad gnome. It seems a pity to leave that one all by himself, said Kate. It will make him even more sad. But I only need four, said Mrs. Wells. Two for each side of my garden path. They'll look very smart. Kate and Ben agreed. Anyway, said Mrs. Wells, I only have enough money to buy four of them. Perhaps someone else will buy the other one. I don't think so, said the man. That one has been on my stall for a long, long time. 
Nobody seems to want him. Poor little gnome, said Kate and Ben. They felt sad. Mrs. Wells felt sad. So the man at the stall said, As you've bought four of them, I will give you the other one free. Anyway, it makes me feel sad just looking at it all there by itself. Mrs. Wells thanked him and Kate helped her carry the box of four gnomes back to her house. Ben carried the sad gnome. Where will you put this one? he asked. I have a good idea, said Mrs. Wells. Come around tomorrow and you'll see. So, the next day, Kate and Ben found Mrs. Wells in her front garden. How do you like my gnomes? she asked. Kate and Ben counted. Two on the left of the path. Ah, two on the right. They do look smart, said Kate. They are the four smiling gnomes with shiny red suits and shiny blue hats, said Ben. That's right, said Mrs. Wells. Kate and Ben looked at each other. You're wondering where the sad gnome has gone, she said. Don't worry. Look up there. And she pointed to a shelf over her front door. There was a garden gnome. But that one has a shiny red suit and a shiny blue hat. And he's smiling, said Ben. That can't be the same gnome, said Kate. It is, said Mrs. Wells. I painted him last night. I gave him a red suit and a blue hat like the others. Did you paint a smile on his face? asked Kate. No, said Mrs. Wells. That appeared when I put him up there in the middle, looking over the whole garden. Wasn't it lucky that Mrs. Wells had found just the right spot for the unhappy gnome on the shelf above her front door? And she liked everything to look neat and tidy, and so it did, with two gnomes on the left of the path and two gnomes on the right. Well, I'm just going to put the finishing touches to the face of my gnome here. And he's a happy gnome with a big smile. There's his nose, that's the difficult bit. And I think he's got smiling eyes too. I think he's the happiest gnome of all because he's got the red coat. In fact, all my gnomes are happy gnomes. Five of them. One, two, three, four, five happy gnomes on top of the wall. But they're all in a straight line and it's not very exciting. I think I'm going to try two gnomes in front of the wall and three gnomes on top of the wall. One, two, three, four, five happy gnomes. Now they look a bit untidy like that. Perhaps I'll try another way. I'll try four gnomes in front of the wall and one gnome on top of the wall. One, two, three, four, five happy gnomes. They may be happy, but I'm not. I know what's wrong. It's him, Mr. Redcoat. He should be on top of the wall by himself. Now let's count them. One, two, three, four, five happy gnomes. And I'm happy too. See you again. Bye-bye. Places that you will see, hear all the stories that there.